Hello. Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at how you can secure your Chrome extension source code and secure your API keys. So to get straight to the point, unless you are making all your requests for your own backend server um, and connecting with the API and then delivering back your responses, there's always going to be some risk involved. But in this video, I'm going to show you some ways that you can secure up your code a little bit and try and protect your API keys as much as possible. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at, and it's going to show you um, on my screen now, is different ways you can minify your files. Now, you need to make sure that you're not obfuscating your files because that's not allowed on the Chrome Web Store. This is specifically for Chrome extensions. So you need to make sure that you're just minifying your code. So what this does is it sort of removes any gaps in the, in the code and sometimes changes a bit of the function names to shorter um, than they are, but it doesn't change the actual way that it can be read. So people can still spot an API key if it's in there, but it just helps minify this down a bit and obviously reduce the file size as well. So you can just search on Google here for like minify.js and you can find a few examples um, that are probably going to be pretty good, but again, make sure that this isn't going to obfuscate your code as well. So that's the first thing I'd recommend looking at for your um, CSS and your JavaScript, just to make those files as small as possible. So another four on um, minifying your files, if you're using a library like React, for example, that actually will minify your code on the build process. So it does it for you, so it makes it a bit easier. So when it comes to API keys, as we mentioned there, it's not possible to 100% secure um, people from being able to find these, but there's a few things you can do that can help. So let's say you've already minified your code a little bit, but your API key is appearing in the source code, say it's um, all just in one long line, but you can see the API key there. Um, so what can you do to actually remove this from the source code, um, but still make it so you can use this within your extension? So one thing that I'm going to show you here is using a Lambda function that you can actually have in between your extension and fetching your API key. So in theory, what this does is it sends a separate call to this function that checks to see if it's your extension that's making the call. And if it is your extension, it will pass back your API key so you can then just use it normally throughout your extension. So I'm going to show you um, how this actually work right away. So what you want to do first is go to Lambda. So go to AWS, set up an account there, and then go to Lambda. Then what we're going to do is create a brand new function. So once you're into Lambda, as I mentioned, click on Create Function. And then in here, all we need to do is just set a new name for our function. So let's just call it um, API Secure um, Keys. Something simple like this. And then you just want to click Create Function. Um, then it will take us to see what sort of security we want to add to our API. Now for this, we're going to keep it really simple. Um, so once this loads, so we have our, our code for our um, API down here, for our function down here, which we'll get to in a moment. But first we need to add a trigger. So this is where we can actually make calls to our, to our new function. So we're going to go down here and select API Gateway. We're going to say uh, create an API. We're going to just keep it to an HTTP API. And for security, we're going to say open. And then when it says down here, if you click on additional settings, you want to make sure that um, cause is allowed because we're making this call from a different domain than the actual Lambda function is stored on. So we want to tick this and then click add. So once that's done, if you go down here, you'll get your actual URL that you can make a call to. So if I click onto this, you'll see the default hello from Lambda response. Now what we want to do is make sure that when we're calling this API, it's checking to see the extension ID. So you could use this for um, your front end code as well, and it just checks for your domain. Um, but what you'll find is when you're um, usually doing this, you can check the referrer um, that's passed through in the headers. Now, again, this isn't 100% um, perfect because people can um, go in and set a, a different referrer header than is actually on their domains. So they can spoof this a little bit. Um, but for most cases, this does help to add that extra layer of security. But as we mentioned, this isn't 100% foolproof. Um, so what we have here is our, our thing just here. And we want to go to our code and actually add in a check to see where this is coming from. But as I mentioned, within a Chrome extension, it doesn't actually send any referrer data um, with these calls, which is a bit annoying. But what it does do, if you send a post request, it sends the origin um, through here. So I'm just going to... Um, put some code into here. Okay, so here is some code that you can use that will actually make these checks for you. So if you see down here, we first have the standard um, checks for your Lambda function. So we have our export handler and then we have our function in here. 
So the first thing we want to do is grab the headers that have been sent to the Lambda call. And we want to set um, just an operation in here. Um, let me just fix this. So then we have our origin. So what we want to do just in a try block in case um, none of this data was sent through, um, because that can happen sometimes. We want to grab the operation. So was it a post request, a get request, etc., and put that in here. Then we want to grab the origin. So this is what is actually sent through um, from our post request in the Chrome extension. And then we just have our try block. So if it didn't work, it's just set to this default up here. Um, and then we want to set our response. So if it was a post request, as you can see just here, we want to listen to see what the origin was. So if this matches our Chrome extension ID, then we can pass in our API key just here. So depending on the type of um, API key that you're passing through, it could just be a standard string, or it could actually be another object of different API keys. So you could have something like this. So key one, and then have key one, key two, key two, and so on. And then that just gets passed through into the message um, part of the response just here. And again, this is very basic, but it shows how you can just put this together. So if I click deploy and then rerun this code here, what you'll see is we get hello origin undefined. So if we look down here, you can see this is going to be this one down here because it wasn't a post request. So if I was to change this to hello um, operation, and then save this and deploy. It should say this is a get request. Yeah, hello get. So you can tell the different types of requests that are coming through. Now inside your extension, all you would need is a code like this. So all we need to do is make sure that we have the, uh, the URL here of our Lambda function. So if I just make sure this is going to the correct um, call. So you see here, this is our, our Lambda function with our API gateway set up. And then we just set in uh, method so we make sure this is a post request and then down here you can see we're getting our response so it says hello origin and message this is where it's checking the origin of our, our, our domain so if that's our extension that will be the extension just there so if I was to grab this uh, here and update our lambda function to listen for this instead like that and then deploy that should then pass back our API keys. So if we go over here, run this again, so let's just trigger this to run, and we'll see that we get the response here, and this is now actually passed in the API key. So we have our key one and key two. So you can then use this within your, um, your call to actually grab this and, and continue the rest of your function without the user actually seeing your API keys. Now, obviously, if they were to open up your background page, for example, paste this code in and call your Lambda function, they would still be able to get your API key. Um, but that's quite rare that someone would go to those lengths. But the next thing I'd mention, say you're using a service like Firebase, you want to definitely make sure that you're taking advantage of Firebase security rules. So you've gone through and made sure that only authorized users can access certain parts of their data, rather than just having it open for anyone to actually access. So that's a really key thing to look at as well. So make sure that any sort of um, area of vulnerability you have within your code that you've thought about and you have different ways that you can sort of secure this. But this is a quick way that you can remove these, these keys from your actual source code so people can't just scan through when they're looking and see like, oh, there's their API key. So this can be quite useful um, and just add that extra bit of difficulty if, they, if someone was going to try and go in and grab that. But like I say, it's not 100% um, secure using this, but it can help just to remove that um, from your source code. You could take it a step further and have um, you know, an API key for this as well. Again, that would actually be visible in your code, but it just makes it so it's not visible. But like I said, if they were to call this straight through there, if they were to grab that you know, domain from here and then open that in their browser, they're not going to be able to see anything. So they would need to know to actually make that call um, themselves as a post request. So that's just an extra level of security you can start to add. I'll put the code um, for both the, the Lambda function and how you would make this post request. It's just a simple fetch post request, but I'll put all of that code in the description as well. And if you've got any questions on how to integrate this into your extension, just drop me a comment and let me know. As I said, the best way to secure this is to have everything go through your own server. So this could be a Lambda function that actually makes the change within your database, for example, um, and doesn't pass back an API key. 
so they're authorized within your extension, then you have a call there. That'd be the best way to do this. This is just the next best step from that, I think. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was useful and give you some, gave you some ideas in terms of how you can begin to secure up your extensions, your source code, stop having API keys just there raw in the code, um, and maybe even outside of Chrome extensions in terms of just cleaning up the way that your front end code is, is displayed by minifying that. And that also helps deliver faster loading pages as well, slightly. Okay, so anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.